This is All India Radio. The news, read by Camp and Chindam. The headlines. Bill introduced in U.S. Congress if passed would elevate the status of Indo-U.S. defense ties on par with that of U.S. other NATO allies. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena arrives in New Delhi on a two-day visit. India-Bangladesh five-day dialogue on security issues including drug trafficking and cattle smuggling across the border is going on in Dhaka. 110 militants killed across Afghanistan by the country's National Army in the past 24 hours. Hezbollah announces the death of its military commander in Syria, Mustafa Badruddin. Iranian Muslims annual Hajj pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia cancelled as Saudi Arabian relation deteriorates. American lawmakers have introduced a bill in Congress which, if passed, would elevate the status of the Indo-U.S. defense ties on par with that of U.S. other NATO allies. Moved by Congressman George Holding, Ed Royce, Elliot Engel and Indian-American Ami Bera, the bill was submitted to the House, of Committee, House Committee on Rules on Wednesday. It will institutionalize the U.S. government's focus on bilateral security relationship with India while sending a powerful signal to New Delhi that Washington is a reliable defense partner. U.S. India Business Council President Mukesh Aghi said the bill had strong bipartisan support and it had a good chance of getting passed. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected to visit the U.S. for a bilateral summit with President Barack Obama next month. He may address the joint session of Congress during his visit. U.S. President Barack Obama has appointed an Indian-American engineer to a key administration post. Manjit Singh has been appointed as the member of the President's Advisory Council on Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Mr. Singh is the president of Agilius, the software technology consulting firm he founded in 2013. He is an engineer graduate of Bombay University. He also received a Master of Science degree from the State University of New York in U.S. President of Sri Lanka, Metropolitan Sirisena, arrived in New Delhi today on a two-day visit. Minister of State for Defence Ravindrajit Singh received him at the airport. Mr. Sirisena will address the valedictory session at the uh, Vicharik Mahakum tomorrow, which is being held as part of the Simhast Mahakum Binu Jain. He will also visit Sanchi, where he will tour the world-famous Sanchi Stoop and attend a function by the Mahabodhi Society of Sri Lanka, during which he will unveil a statue of Angarika Dharmapala. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will host a dinner in his honour this evening in New Delhi. The visit is expected to contribute to further strengthening the close and contributor relationships uh, between India and uh, Sri Lanka. Pakistan and Bangladesh have summoned each other's diplomats as tensions between them rose following Wednesday's execution of Bangladeshi Islamic political party leader accused of committing crimes during the country's 1971 war of independence against Pakistan. Pakistan's foreign ministry called on the top Bangladeshi diplomat in Islamabad to give him a unanimously passed parliament resolution condemning the execution of Motivir Rahman Nizami shortly after Bangladesh summoned the Pakistan envoy in Dhaka to express its strong protest over Pakistani statement. India and Bangladesh yesterday began a five-day dialogue, five day dialogue in Dhaka over a host of security issues including drug trafficking and cattle smuggling across the border between the two neighbours. A 21-member delegation led by Border Security Force BSF Chief KK Sharma yesterday reached Dhaka to hold the talks with their counterpart Border, Guards of Border Guard Bangladesh BGB. The Indian team also includes officials from the Union Health Ministry. It will brief the BGB delegation about measures put in place to completely stop instances of cattle smuggling and other illegal substances across the boundary. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned. Sign a DA in his valedictory remarks. Chairman Mohammed Hamid Ansari said a just concluded session was a short and challenging one. He said members showed an extraordinary ability to debate and dissent, to accommodate and differ amidst their political compulsions and ideological positions. Earlier, the House bid farewell to 53 of its members from 14 states who are retiring between June and July this year. They included 13 from Congress, 11 from BJP, 6 from BSP, 5 from JDU, 3 each from AIA, DMK and Samajwadi Party, 2 each from TDP, DMK, BJD and NCP, 1 each from Shivasena and Shiromani Akalidal and 2 independents. The prominent retirees included Union Ministers M. Minkaya Naidu, Nirmala Sita Raman, Piyush Goyal and Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi, all BJP. The notable retirees from the Congress included Mohsina Kidwai, Ambika Soni, Oscar Fernandez and Jairam Ramesh.
This is All India Radio, giving you the news. Afghan National Army killed 110 militants and wounded more than 60 insurgents in several provinces in the past 24 hours. The Afghan Defense Ministry said yesterday that the highest number of casualties were recorded in Herat province, where 47 combatants were killed. Security in Afghanistan has drastically deteriorated in recent months as both Taliban insurgents and IS have expanded their activities in the south of the country. In Iraq, at least 12 people were killed and 15 others wounded after gunmen attacked a popular cafe in a town north of Baghdad. A Iraqi official said today three gunmen attacked the coffee shop in the mainly Shiite town of Baalad, shooting into the crowd shortly after midnight yesterday. Once police arrived at the scene, two of the attackers detonated suicide vests. Balad, about 80 kilometers north of Baghdad, is under heavy security. The attackers would have had to pass through three police checkpoints before reaching the target. This attack follows a two-day wave of bombings in the capital that have left at least 80 people dead. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for those attacks. Hezbollah today announced the death of its military commander in Syria, Mustafa Badreddin. Hezbollah, along with Iran, is battling on the side of the regime in Damascus, making the trio de facto allies on the ground. Israel fears that the chaos in Syria could help strengthen arch-enemy Hezbollah. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu admitted in April that the army had attacked dozens of convoys there that were transporting weapons to the group. Today's statement gave no further details about how Badruddin died. Badruddin was one of the five figures from Hezbollah accused of the assassination of Rafik Hariri, the former prime minister of Lebanon. Iran and Saudi Arabia's failure to re- mend relations following January's severing of diplomatic ties has resulted in the cancellation of Iranian Muslims' annual Hajj pilgrimage to the kingdom in September. According to a statement carried by state-run news website Sabak, uh, an agreement for arrangements for this year's Hajj was not signed due to Tehran's demands, which include the granting of visas inside Iran and transport arrangements that would evenly split the pilgrims between Saudi and Iranian airlines. Minister of Hajj and Umrah Mohammed Bintin told Saitran television station Ekhbaria that uh, Iran was the only country that refused to sign the agreement. Both countries have blamed the fiasco on the other. Ties between the two Middle East countries were severed after Saudi diplomatic missions in Iran were ransacked in response to the execution of prominent Shiite cleric Nimr al-Nimr in the Shuni-led kingdom. Talks on the issue were held, but the countries have not resolved the rift. And Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Colonel Rajavardhan Singh Rathod has said that the Film Facilitation Office FFO set up by the central government was a step forward toward facilitating single window clearance for filmmakers, promote India as a filming destination and provide the platform for film tourism in the country. Inaugurating the Indian Pavilion at Cannes Film Festival in France, Mr. Rathod said that the primary objective of the Film Facilitation Office was to create an environment that inspired filmmakers and tap the vast talent available in the Indian film industry. And now in this bulletin, the main points. Bill introduced in U.S. Congress, if passed, would elevate the status of Indo-U.S. defense ties on par with that of U.S. other NATO allies. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena arrives in New Delhi on a two-day visit. India-Bangladesh five-day dialogue on security issues, including drug trafficking and cattle smuggling across the border, is going on in Dhaka. 110 militants killed across Afghanistan by the country's national